So, uh, as Bill said, I'm Alex. Uh, I work at Session M on a variety of things, but front end is one of them. And, uh oh. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> it went to sleep. Okay. Hopefully, it'll stay awake if I'm like moving the slides. So, I work on a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, one of the things that I've dealt with lately that uh, I've thought a lot about and looked a lot into is how to test stuff. Um, namely, I like to test stuff because a lot of stuff breaks. And I don't like when stuff breaks because I have to fix it. So I uh, learned about contact testing. So, oh. <laughs> Almost there. Hey, <laughs> so show of hands, who's ever heard of contract testing before? Oh, hey, there's like a couple people. Nice. <laughs> so contract testing. What is contract testing? So to kind of understand contract... <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Hold on. Is there... I don't know. Oh, wait. Okay. I guess I, I got to stand over here. I think that's the trick. No, so contract testing. I'll, uh, I'll kind of move through this fast because I think everybody kind of knows about the different types of tests. So it's not an integration test. Nope. Closer. It's, uh, it's kind of a unit test, and it's like a unit test as an integration test. So <laughs> it's a little bit weird. It doesn't really fall under like a, a certain category, and it takes a little while to kind of like mentally wrap your head around. <laughs> so effectively, here's an integration test, or excuse me, a unit test, right? So you have a car, it has a number of wheels, you test that the number of wheels is equal to four. Sweet. Okay, pretty simple. <laughs> oh man, I'm trying you guys. So here's an integration test, right? So basically it's like, rather than the unit test where you just test the class stuff, you actually want to start up the server because sometimes stuff happens in production that doesn't happen inside a unit test. So I'm sure everybody's probably experienced a use case where uh, the unit test passed but stuff still broke in production because of a variety of issues. So integration tests were born effectively. So this one, you start the server, right? You get the vehicle, you create it, you save it to the database, and then you test that it has a number of wheels. So it actually flows through the database and out, and then into the wild. Now, the problem with this comes when you start to add different things. So both of those are pretty good. They're all nice when you start with an app. But when you move on and some cool guy decides to add a microservice, right? So you got a front end, you got a back end, then you got another service that, let's say we created one to uh, store the number of wheels on our vehicle, right? So another useful microservice. So you can see here that basically to make the test pass, we mocked the microservice, right? So the problem with this is this test pass, but who actually knows what the microservice returns? It could be anything, right? Because you haven't actually tested this. So there's a couple of solutions to this. You could start up also the microservice for your integration test. So now you have like a front end, right? You have a back end, and then you have your microservice running. The problem comes when you have five or six microservices, right? So what are you gonna do? Like start up your .NET apps, your Go apps, like your Ruby apps, your, your JavaScript apps. Like, I mean, Docker Compose is nice, but nobody wants to work in that test environment. And so that's where contract testing comes in. So can anybody tell you what that microservice really does? So yeah, problem. You can't unit test a microservice because other people can change code. So you don't know what that's, endpoint returns on the microservice. And so that's where contract testing comes in. Is basically you need a way to verify that certain stuff is returned from that microservice and that also you can handle that response. So contract test. So here's a normal integration test, right? You got your front end, you got your back end, then there's responses, you know, post response, get response, patch response, all that kind of normal stuff. 
So here's a contract test. So instead of starting the back end, you only start one of the two, right? So you start the front end, you make a request, and then at the same time, you start what's called a contract server. So I kind of made up that term. It's not like, don't Google it. But effectively what it is is it's a server that will accept any request and then record what was sent and then generate a file for it, right? So what that file does is it stores information about that request, like what was asked for, and then you tell the server what to respond with. And then it creates a contract, right? A contract is effectively an agreement between any number of parties. And so that's why it's called a contract file. It's basically that contract server is storing what is supposed to happen. And so what do you do with that file? You basically take that file and then you can run that contract test against the back end. So you stored effectively at this point that the front end asked for the number of wheels from a vehicle and then the back end responded with the number of wheels from a vehicle. And then you took that file that stored that information about that response and then what it actually does is it will run that same host request that you just ran against the back end actually against the back end. So it will make a real request to the back end and then ensure that what you said the back end needed to return was actually returned. And so effectively what you've done is you've created an integration test that's maybe a little bit slower but can be run independently. So now with this situation you don't need to start up all your different apps in the same environment. So what does that look like in reality? So yep. Yeah. So PACT is, how many people, has anybody here heard of PACT? It's a big framework, well maybe a small framework. <laughs> <laughs> so what is PACT? So PACT allows for integration testing to happen in the contract way, right? So effectively what you do is you import some stuff and it has like, basically you can use GraphQL, you can use Apollo, it has adapters for all of them. And so what's happening here is basically this is a PACT test. So you can see here, we have a GraphQL query, right? This interaction is saying it's like, okay, I'm gonna send a GraphQL <coughs> request to the contract server. And so it gets a GraphQL request. You say it will send the vehicle query, right? That gets the number of wheels, which path it goes to, what HTTP verb, which variables, right? And then what the expected response is. So that's all the information that goes into the contract. And then what happens here is effectively this file is then written somewhere. So it's like a JSON file. You can open it up and you can see all the information about the request. And then you can take this file and then you can run it against that back end like we were talking about. And so effectively you've created, again, that situation where you can integration test as many things as you want without actually having to start everything up. So you'll notice here this provider add interaction here at the bottom. So the way PACT works is there's two concepts. There's called something called a provider and there's something called a consumer. A provider is what gives the information, right? And then the consumer is what eats the information. And so basically in the context of a provider and a consumer, you will always have both of them and it, basically where the test is running dictates which one you're dealing with. And so you, as you record these, as you work through them, as you test everything, it will, at the end of it, generate that whole contract that you can then take and run against anything else. And so then you get into a situation where teams can move independently, right? You don't have to have one team be able to, or all your teams be able to start up all the environments to be able to test everything. Now it gets a little bit more complicated even after that because when you have microservices, you have versions. And so in the ideal world, what you do is you scope the contracts by your microservice version. So what do you do with a, a version contract? Effectively, at that point in time, what you can do is you can keep track of which versions of a microservice work with which other versions of a microservice. So if you have A, B, and C, and version 1.0 doesn't work with version 2.0 of microservice B, then contracts allow you to theoretically keep track of that you know that this version does not work with this version because the quote unquote contracts did not pass. Did I confuse everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah.
So it's it's really uh, it's complicated. It's hard. Um, unfortunately, I uh, I wish that I had a live demo uh, that was really cool earlier. I, I don't, so I've been one up. But that's uh, effectively what contract testing is. So it allows you uh, packed again is like it's like their GitHub repo term. They have like a website and everything, but. And it basically allows you to test everything separately, but just like integration tests, just to summarize. So that's it. I'm sorry, I don't have a demo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Any questions, guys? There's one. So what is the largest project that you use something like this for? So this is actually something that was just introduced in November of last year. Um, so we haven't fully integrated it with anything. Uh, but basically, it's the goal is to integrate it with CI, so each project can store different.